Hi everyone and welcome back to my reactions today. We are checking out Mad Max 2 aka Mad Max 2 The Road Warrior. I am very very excited to dive on into this movie. This is a movie that I have been really looking forward to especially after the first Mad Max movie because the first Mad Max movie was so much fun and I really like the fourth Mad Max movie I believe Mad Max Fury Road if you haven't seen that one some people were saying in the comments that they haven't seen Mad Max Fury Road just because um, it didn't have Mad Max in it it doesn't have Mel Gibson in it as Mad Max but that go watch it it is an amazing movie and I will be doing a rewatch of it on this channel it'll be more of a movie commentary over a movie reaction but it's just a movie I really want to see again and I feel like it would work after watching the other three Mad Max movies but yeah in this movie I do not know what's going to happen the villain is still alive will this take place right after the first movie will this take place years after the first movie I don't know Mad or Max has has now become the Mad Max he has now become mad his his wife it might be dead or his girlfriend might be dead his daughter I think it was is dead um, there's just so much that has gone wrong in his life in the last 10 minutes of that movie and he became Mad Max and I love that so much and so I'm wondering in this movie because I'm pretty sure in a, eventually Mad Max becomes like a, a post-apocalyptic sort of movie like a very wastelandish sort of movie and in the first movie it was sort of like that but there were still like remnants of society there was still the police force there were still towns and villages and stuff like that but it's, it didn't feel like as wastelandy as Fury Fury Road did, but maybe that's just because Fury Road takes place way in the future. I don't really know. But yeah, maybe this movie will be more wastelandy, more post-apocalyptic. Maybe the world will have crumbled even more by the last by this time. But yeah, I'm just very excited to get into this movie. I don't know what else to say. Um, yeah, before we get into this movie though, let's do the lighting. I'm very excited for the lighting today because I have no idea what color I'm gonna do. So let me turn on the light and then I'll see what color I will choose. Boop. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. My color today, I think I'm going to go, ah, see, okay, I was going to look at the thumbnail, but the thumbnail is just Mel Gibson with, like, short hair looking into the distance, and he's wearing, like, a gray coat thing, like, a gray, like, blanket that goes over him, kind of like a coat, and he looks very disheveled, and I feel like I'm going to go, like, this color, like an orange, like an orange. I was going to go yellow, but I think it's too bright for yellow today, so... I'm going orange because I feel like this is going to be more wastelandy. Again, probably set in Australia's outback or somewhere in Australia, like the last movie. I feel like maybe more outbacky, maybe more sandy, kind of this time around. So yeah, orange. I feel like will suit the environment very, very well. Before we get into these reactions as well, if you'd like to watch more of my content, you can head over to my Patreon, where I've uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube, as well as early access reactions to my TV shows and movies that come out one week early. There are also two exclusive Patreon movies a month that you guys on Patreon get to choose. Thank you so, so much if you check it out. Now let's get back to the video. Okay, let's just dive into this movie. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy my reaction to Mad Max 2, The, Ro the, Rude, the Road Warrior. Oh, also before we get in, apologies if you can hear people in the background. Those are just my my roommates. I just 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 ignore them. Thank you so much. Kennedy Miller presents Mel Gibson in Mad Max to Toady. That's a good name. There's a lot of new cast, which makes me think that which makes me think that this is. A few years, maybe, after the original movie. Brian May comes back. I liked his music in the first one. I liked his music in the first one. And George Miller is returning. George Miller, I haven't seen any of his movies besides Fury Road before watching these Mad Max movies, and gotta say, he's really good. For reasons long forgotten, two mighty warrior tribes went to war. And touched off a black okay, so this is the backstory of the world. I was wondering if we'd get that in this movie. A firestorm of fear. Men began to feed on men. Oh, what the heck? Ordinary men were battered and smashed. Men like Max. <laughs> the warrior Max. And now he's mad. Mad Max. I really didn't need to see that again. I really did not need to see that again. Oh, look at him. Look at him. The car is really cool and his new look. His new look looks good. 
I love the dog too. I love the dog. It's not the same dog from the first movie though, is it? It's a different one. The, the car chases already feel so much better for some reason. I don't know why. They just feel like way higher budget. Oh, the arrow in his arm. Oh, you might want to get that looked at, buddy. You might want to go to the hospital for that. I don't know. I, I guess no hospital, I guess, but still, you might want to take it out of your arm at some point. Just a suggestion. Okay, you know what? You can keep it in. You can, I would change my mind. Keep it in. I don't want to see this. Oh my god. Oh my god, that scared me. Oh, I didn't expect that. Why did I not expect that? Obviously, that was going to happen. Birthday to you. Yeah. I would have kept that as well. Wow, look at that shot. Look how beautiful that shot is. Just the sky is pink and purple and the car. Oh, sexy shot. What's he gonna do with just that crowbar? What's he gonna do with just that crowbar? What the heck? What is this thing? It's like a flying car with a snake on it. What? <laughs> this man was sitting on the ground like a mole. He's being mole man. The underminer, some would say. Man, you. You're quick. Very quick. I like this guy. <laughs> He's so interesting. Also, Max's outfit, I didn't comment on it. His outfit is so cool in this movie. Kill me and you'll never find out. Is he gonna tag tag along, be Mel Gibson's partner in crime? Uh oh. That definitely looks like a lot of gas there. Chunk, chunk, chunk. Bet your life they mean to keep it. Is this movie, is this movie a raid movie? Like, they're gonna heist the gasoline? Master of flame, round and round. The tank, Jason? Tank. Is that Jason? Like is this where he did after the Friday the Thirteenth movies? He just became a driver in Mad Max. Kind of a cool, cool little fort that they got set up over there. I'd like to go and spend the day at that fort. How come, how come in so many movies he eats dog food? In Lethal Weapon, he eats dog treats, and in this one, he's eating dog food. Does Mel Gibson just actually like dog food and just wants to eat it? <laughs> oh no, don't fight the dog on this. Police? Do they steal police cars? Well, imagine like a really wide shot, like a sweeping wide drone shot of all of these cars driving with the sand behind them. That would be such a cool shot, wouldn't it? Like something like, oh, like, oh, that's already a cool shot. That's already an amazing shot. There's a lot of fades in this movie for cutting. Something I've noticed, there's a lot of fades, which is not unusual in movies, but there's just a lot of them in this movie. Whoa. Are they chasing this car? What's happening at the moment? I feel like they're chasing cars. Are people escaping the, the refinery or something? This is amazing. The telescope. Oh no. What if she dies? Oh, it's not a, it's not a, it's a man. I thought it was a woman. Oh, that's a woman. Okay. I wasn't, I was not confused. So the man was trying to help her escape is what was happening. I hope these guys die a horrible death. Just want you to know that, everyone to know that now. I hope these guys die a horrible death. The music has gotten so epic. Something, Max has an idea. Oh no! No 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 no! 
Oh no 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 Oh my god. You know how amazing this movie has been so far? And there's been almost no dialogue. Like that's really impressive. There's been very little dialogue in this movie. Besides the guy Mel Gibson's companion at the moment. He's that's like the only person who's spoken really. I don't think Mel Gibson is okay, he's spoken like three times. Oh, they pinned him to the car. I did not even realize that. I love how everyone in this world is very self-centered. Obviously, you have to be because it's like a desolate wasteland. But like, Max is still like helping people, but only to serve his interests still. So he's still like a bad person, but not as bad as everyone else, which makes him better. You know what I mean? And also, he wasn't a bad person before these movies. He was a bad... He became who he is through the events of the first movie, which is also cool. I love that the gate is a bus. I don't know why I think that's so fun. It just is. Are these guys trying to build like a new society, kind of? How did you get through out there? Look, I want some answers. Where did you find him? You didn't even give him time to respond. Give him like five seconds. He's dead. No arrangement, no gas. See, he feel no pain? He's biting his foot. Okay, okay, I was confused. I thought that the, the people outside were just guarding, but they're actually trying to get in. Okay, I understand now, I understand now. Don't hold your fire. Don't hold your fire. It's not worth it. Okay, he looks really cool though. He looks really cool. Look around you. Oh. He has good aim. Oh my god. It like went into his head. <laughs> oh my god, it went into his head. Oh my god, it decapitated him basically. His fingers! What is this kid? What is happening in this movie? A boomerang just decapitated someone's scalp, scalped someone, and took his fingers off, and this kid did a backflip and then went into a hole. I understand you, Pete. Whoa. We all are someone below. What if he's the original villain from the first movie? Imagine. That'd be such a twist. The only reason I'm saying that is because of Fury Road, and I know that the main actor is the guy with like the mask and then the white face paint or whatever. And I know that's the same actress in the first movie, and I just thought the first the Fury Road was like a spin-off or like a reboot, but I, it could be in the same universe. And so if he lives through all of the movies, this could be him. It's possible. It's possible. In the whole compound, and I spare you lives. Why didn't he just say give me everything and I'll spare your lives? Why did he have to say all of those individually? No! You just wasted an arrow, my dude. That arrow could have been used to save everyone. Talk to this humongous. He's a reasonable man. I like this guy. I like this guy. He seems very reasonable, doesn't he? <laughs> this kid is amazing. I love like the panting, dog-like, animalistic nature of this kid. It makes total sense growing up in this environment. That is our lifeline to a, to a place beyond that vermin on machines. What? You're on Australia. It's like a giant island. Dragon! If we have to, yes, there's always a way. Oh, is there like a safe spot? There's a safe place in Australia somewhere? Let it haul that tanker. You want to get out of here? <gasps> the one that he was at at the start of the movie. Got yourself a deal. Max is true to his word. Max wouldn't lie. Oh, he took his dog with him too. That's good. That's good. Of course he has to. I was going to say, if he didn't take the dog with him, I would have been a little mad. I like that dog a lot. 
That would sound like really, really close. This kid is actually a ninja or something. So cool. I want to be this kid. Well, maybe not be this kid because all I know how to do is howl and and grunt. <laughs> but but their skills, their skills with a weapon and with howling are impeccable. I also like to say that music in this movie is amazing. It is like a step up from the last movie, which is phenomenal. Lingerie. <laughs> I don't know why that was so funny. It was just like so random after all the things he was listing. Did not expect that one. If I tried it, I'm gonna eat it. So find your own. Get, get it. That snake is getting whipped back and forth. If it's not, if it wasn't dead, it's dead now. I wasn't wrong. It is a flying car. It's literally a flying car. This is amazing. I kind of want them to be partners. Yeah, it's going to be hard to get back. It's very loud, very slow, very big. Whoa, the flying car is epic. Like, it is so cool. You're not going to win it in a fight, though. It's a big car. It may be slow and big, but it's strong. Oh, wow. That guy just got smushed. Wow. That stun. That stun was good. Look at this. This guy is just climbing on this truck while it's driving. Look at this shot. This is exactly what I wanted. These aerial shots of the cars driving. So good. Open the gate. How are you going to open the gate enough and close it fast enough so that these other cars don't get in though? That's my question. I forgot about, I forgot about this guy on the truck. I forgot about him too. Oh, I thought it was going to explode. It didn't. That makes sense. Close the gates, close the gates, close the gates. Oh my god, close the gates, you dumb idiots. Flamethrower them. That was really unnecessary. He calls that the butt bump. It's a special tool, specialty. We're going out tonight. You all know what to do. Just get on with it. Timber. Just get on with it. Monty Python and the Holy Grail, anyone? I've been saving a lot. I want you to have them. He's like, thanks, but I don't have that gun. <laughs> Those bullets are useless to me. <laughs> imagine, imagine if he said that. Ah. Uh. Ah. Her hair looks like Cindy Lou Who's hair from The Grinch, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. <laughs> please tell me, that. please agree with me. I think she, it she definitely looks like Cindy Lou Who, like old Cindy Lou Who with the hair. <laughs> I want you to drive the tanker. Yeah, do it. Sorry. If he drive, if he drives the tanker, which I believe he will, it will. It, it, it will remind me a lot of Mad Max Fury Road because I feel like that movie, the most, the majority of it, they're driving like this big truck. Paradise, two thousand miles from here, fresh water. It's just gonna be the exact same. It's just a utopia that doesn't exist. That's my interpretation of it right now. It could exist, and I could be wrong, and I'll be happy if it does, but I think it won't. He did lose his family. This guy was speaking cold hard facts, but it was like, you're telling this, ah, oh, I would have punched him too if I was Mac. You're out there with the garbage. You're nothing. That's probably one of the greatest insults of all time. You're out there with the garbage. You're nothing. Come on, get out of here. Mad Max needs to adopt this child. I'm gonna be honest though, he's not that mad in this movie, is he? He's very reasonable under the circumstances of the world and the past, his past. Okay, so who's gonna drive the tanker? I will. I am. I could write the script. Call me George Miller. That's right. 
I am the guy who made these movies. Isn't he just driving straight towards the other camp? I love this sped up, the sped up um, shots. I don't know. They're very, they're very sped up. Like what? It would be like a lower frame rate, right? Because it was kind of choppy. So maybe they, they filmed it at like 16 frames per second or something like that instead. I don't know. He just fixed that car and now it's broken. What a waste of time. You should have just driven the thing. If the dog dies, that's the last straw. You didn't really hide very well, did you? No! If you kill the dog, I will kill you. I won't, but I'll be angry with you. They killed the dog! I hate this movie. I hate this movie. I hate it. That man just exploded into pieces, like literally exploded into little bits. The music is really good. Not just now, well it is now, but the whole movie, it's been exceptional. That would terrify me. I'd be like, I want to go back to sleep now, please. I want to go back unconscious. <laughs> He lost his car and his dog. What's left for him? Nothing. There's literally nothing left for him. Some new clothes. These are called the driving outfit because you're still driving the tanker. <laughs> Same to you. I'll drive that tanker. Yeah, he will. Yeah, he will. Ah. He's about to play some hockey. Move that kid. Contact, get rid of him. What if this movie ends while they're on the road and the third movie is them on the road? Is a continuation like straight after this one. That would be very interesting. I feel like we're getting to the point now where this movie could end on a cliffhanger with them having just escaped and bashed their way through or something because the other one just kind of ended. So I feel like this one could do that too. I was gonna say, he needs to be dropping bombs at some point. He, I'm glad he did that. It would've bugged me if he never did. I don't know why, I just would've. <laughs> oh, you pleb heads. Why did you have to look behind you? Kaboom! Oh wow, look at that explosion. That's so beautiful. Oh. Wow, I love explosions a lot and that was a nice one 10 out of 10 explosion. Oh, it's still going. It's still going Oh, that's so good. That was so good Whenever someone hops from car to car, it's really cool Ah, oh, beautiful shot Oh no. Oh! Ow, 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 His leg is so strong, he can flip over a car. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, poor man just died. Oh, he died very badly. Ah, oh, I just got goosebumps for some reason though. Watch out, lady, watch out, lady. She did not watch out, did she? She absolutely did not watch out. Oh no, everyone's dying one by one. I don't see how they're getting out of this situation. Oh, and they caught on the barbed wire. That's really gruesome. Oh, ah. I would just like to say, this movie is really impressive. And, oh. 
That was awesome. That was awesome. That was so cool. The the shot of him coming out of the car. The shot. Oh, it's awesome. Okay, Max. Okay. You and the kid versus the world. Finally, I was wondering why they weren't shooting the tires. The blocks had gone. That poor man did not deserve that fate. Oh, look at that. Look how cool this is. Look how cool this is. Look how cool this is. Look how cool this shot is. Oh, I got goosebumps. That is exactly the shot that I wanted in this movie. And I got it. I'm so happy. Oh my god, and the flying thing just makes it so much more cool. I don't know why, they're just it's so awesome. Oh, nice. Run him over, run him over, run him over. Oh, 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 I did not expect that. That was, that was something. That definitely, that, those people have no heads. What has this guy been doing the whole time? He's just been there, doing nothing? Oh, I knew that guy was gonna die. I knew that guy was gonna die. It was just like a, an in inevitability. Oh no, 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 no. This guy better not die. No. Please don't die. Okay, good. He didn't explode. He didn't explode. Wow. Look at this shot. Wow, look at these shots. Oh my god. That shot was the most beautiful thing I've seen. I thought he got run over. I thought he got run over. Oh. That was so unnecessary, he just killed himself for no reason. Okay, but the truck is no longer functional. Oh, there's a piece of meat there, I'm assuming that was a person. So the tanker didn't have gasoline in it, right? It was, it was a ruse? Yeah, 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 that's rough, buddy. It's not fuel at all. Is that it? Is that it? Oh, okay, good. Among us, we found a new leader. The man who came from the sky. The gyro captain. Oh, he's the leader now? Good for him. And the road warrior. That was the last we ever saw of him. Look at that shot. That is such an epic shot of him. And just the, the sound of nothingness. Just wind. And now the score kicks in. Oh, good way for the credits to end. That was such a good movie. That was a really, really good movie. That was, I like that movie better than the first one, if I'm going to be honest. I think that I like that one better than the first one. Just everything about that one ramped up the first one to an, another level. It kicked everything up a notch. The quality, I think, of the movie was better. The action, I thought, was better. The acting, for the most part, I thought was better. I think the acting in the first one may have been better just because there was more, there were more emotional scenes. This one was kind of just straight up an action movie. There was, like, you could see... You could see Max, uh, Mel Gibson's character, kind of like debate in his mind, and he has like you could see how conflicted he was about his past and stuff, and that was really good. I just thought maybe there was more emotional connection because he had his family in the first one, um, but I don't know. I thought the acting was still great in this one. The score kicks it up a notch in this one. The shots, the camera work, the directing, the writing. I thought everything was just better in this movie. And the first one was, I gave four out of five stars, I'm pretty sure. So this one, whew, four and a half, maybe four and a half out of five. I'm not sure. I love this movie a lot. And that was my reaction to Mad Max 2. I think it was called Mad Max The Road Warrior. Uh, that was such a good movie. Also, you may notice I'm back in my old room for this review. That's because I came back home to visit to get my vaccine and I thought, and I just forgot to do my review at the end of the movie because I was rushing to get to my bus on time. So I'm doing my review at home with my special guest, Huxley. She hasn't been in a video in a while and it's been really sad. I really wanted her in a video. I've really missed her 
watching i guess sleeping while i've been watching the movies so it's really nice for her to be back helping me review mad max too uh she I, she's watched it before so she's gonna give some pretty good insight i believe later on in this review um but yeah look at her look how wise she looks right now like no like that's the wisest dog i've ever seen in my life <laughs> okay, let's get to this review. That was my review of Mad Max 2 The Road Warrior, the 1981 action adventure movie, uh, an hour and 36 minutes, starring Mel Gibson, Bruce Spence, and Emil Minty. I guess I can also say, like, Virginia Hay was. I don't think she really starred, though. It was mostly Bruce Spence and Mel Gibson, uh, and maybe Emil Minty. But yeah, that movie was really, really good. I. I've had some, like, usually I do my reviews, and I and I do them right after the movie, but this is kind of the first time I've had, I've had well over six hours, seven hours since I watched the movie, and I finally have had the time to sit down and do this review. So this is kind of the first time where, where like, the movie and my thoughts in the movie, I've kind of, like, been able to digest them a little bit and kind of just, like, think about how much I like the movie. And if I just really liked the movie when I ended it because of like the ending or something like that. And some, cause like sometimes you like finish a movie and you're like, oh my God, that was amazing. But then like, and then when I review it, I'm like, oh, that was amazing. But then a couple days later, I'm like, oh, but was it really as amazing as I said it was? You know what I mean? So I'm glad that I had that time with Mad Max because I realized it doesn't change how amazing I thought that movie was. Mad Max 2 was absolutely phenomenal. The action, the just the sense of adventure, the characters, the music, the directing, the writing, everything about that movie was elevated tenfold from the first movie in my opinion. I thought that I thought that it had a bigger budget, which could have been why as well, obviously. I think it felt like it had a bigger budget, but it felt like everyone put more effort into this movie. I mean, the first Mad Max movie is an amazing movie. I loved that movie. I think I gave it four stars. It was so much fun, and you could tell just how much love was put into that movie. But this movie was a hot, was a bigger budget sequel with that same amount of love poured into it, and it just it you could feel that love on screen, but you could also like you could feel that love, but you could also feel that love for directing, for screenwriting, for acting. For, like ju just for these characters and it was so cool to see the I guess I'll talk about the score first the score of this movie I said in my first Mad Max movie reaction that I it's a score that I liked but I wouldn't listen to the Mad Max 2 score is a score that I liked and it's a score that I would listen to it is a score that if I can find the soundtrack and download the soundtrack I would find the soundtrack and download the soundtrack or not I would find I will try to find the soundtrack and then I will download the soundtrack in one way or another um it was so good there was I think there was more soundtrack in this movie than in the last movie at least it felt like there was more music that could have just been because I was noticing the music more but the music was beautiful but kind of like chaotic at times and it was just it fit the movie perfectly. It fit the tone of the movie perfectly, and it just fit whatever scene the music was in. It really elevated the scene. And as I keep saying in my reviews, music in movies should be used to elevate a scene. If a scene is better because of the music, then the music is elevating the scene. The music is doing what is what it is supposed to do. Sometimes the music can be the focus of the scene. If there's a if this if the movie is based on music, but this movie is Mad Max Two is not based on music, so the music should not be the focus of the scene. And I think this movie did a great job of the music not being intrusive, so that you don't just focus on the music solely focus on the music, but the music is still loud enough and amazing enough and emotional enough that you can really feel the music and connect with the music while not solely focusing on it so i thought the music did an amazing amazing job brian may i think was the composer again not the queen guy i believe but i don't know i'm doing this review before my first movie even releases so if he is the queen guy then a lot of people have probably already told me and I know future Oliver will know, but past Oliver, the one doing this review, will not. So I don't think it's the same Brian May from Queen, but if it is, then wow, I did not know. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> okay, getting into the thing that I really, really liked about this movie was the action. The action in this movie was outstanding. And as I said in my credit thing of this movie, when I just kind of talk over the credits, I really like watching the progression because I have seen Mad Max Fury Road. I like watching the progression from 
first Mad Max to Fury Road because I used to just know Fury Road and I was like, wow, Fury Road is an epic masterpiece. But when I watched Mad Max, I was expecting Fury Road. But what I got was the first Mad Max movie. I got something that was very, with similar tones, but still very different from Fury Road, the one, the Mad Max that I am familiar with. So it has been really interesting to watch these movies develop into the movie that I know. And this movie, Mad Max 2, really felt like Fury Road in a lot of different ways. A lot of ways that Mad Max, the first Mad Max, did not. The first Mad Max felt like uh, Fury Road in just some of the world building aspects and stuff like that. And some of the characters and stuff, they felt familiar, but... Fury Road was still felt a distance away, like they still could be two different universes in some way, some aspect. But this movie, Mad Max 2, I really felt that Fury Road and Mad Max 2 were connected in the same universes from the car, from the cars, from the action sequences, how they were filmed, how everything was done practically, which was brilliant. The characters in this movie, some of the characters reminded me of characters in Fury Road. So it was really interesting to see how that developed how the first Mad Max movie developed into the second Mad Max movie, and I'm very excited for the third one to see how that one develops into eventually becoming Fury Road, the fourth Mad Max movie. Or I wasn't sure if Fury Road was like a was like a reboot of the franchise or not, because it has the same some of the same actors from the original movie. But I guess I'll figure that out. I'll have a better understanding of that when I rewatch Fury Road in a couple weeks. Two weeks, I think. Three weeks, two weeks, two weeks, right? Two weeks. But yeah, that I'm very excited for that. But yeah, Mad Max 2, the action was I like I, I, I phenomenal is not good enough for this movie. Phenomenal, like watching all these cars blow up knowing that these are all practical, knowing that all the stunts in this movie are practical for the, I, I'm guessing almost the majority of them. If anything, the only special effect crashes and stuff was the pilot, was the uh, guy flying the, the flying car thing when he was in the air. Some of the stuff was blue screened, I feel like, but most of it, even some of those crashes felt kind of real, but yeah, the action felt so real and it felt so authentic to kind of reality or at least the reality in this universe where cars don't always explode when they crash because when for example there was a car in this movie at the start where it crashes into this pile of junk it like flies up and crashes into this pile of junk and i went pow, pow, thinking it was going to explode and it didn't and i was surprised but then i was like oh that is just kind of that's kind of how real life works cars don't explode 24 7 cars don't do this cars don't do that and so it was really interesting to see kind of these real life mechanics in this action movie. I don't know. I just thought the action was great. The stunt, the stunt actors jumping from car to car, climbing on this fuel truck, everything looking like they were actually driving these cars, actual actors on top. And if you said they are, then they are, then I would 100% believe you. Like it looked so real and that it, it made the action so immersive because the action, although it was goofy, the cars, just like the funness of the action, the funness of this universe is is goofy in some way it still felt grounded in some way and still felt very real real is probably the best word that i can use and i don't know it just it works so well like going to fury road fury road has literally a guy hanging on strings playing a guitar that shoots flames and it is so epic and yet it is still believable in this universe and it, i think that is just how well George that is just a, a tribute to how well George Miller has crafted this universe how he can make all of these things feel very real and like they're actually existing in this universe without making them feel goofy I thought that was so good another thing I thought about the action that was really interesting was the was the frame rate of the action sometimes the frame rate of the action would I, it, I think it drops, right? It drops like old movies when it, everyone looks like super fast, like those black and white old movies. It's because they were filming at like 16 f f FPS or 12 FPS or something like that. I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I, I think that is what they were filming at. But some of the action felt like it was filmed like that. There were a lot of times actually that I, once I started noticing it, I noticed it. There was a lot of times where the, the frame rate I felt like would drop to 12 FPS or 16 FPS and cars would kind of, it would make everything look like it was going a lot faster than they probably were in real life. But you could 100% tell 
just because sometimes like the frame rate it's like a little jerky you know it's kind of like almost like a stop motion but not really like a stop motion if you know what i mean just imagine like those old black and white movies and stuff like that kind of like they're a little bit jittery so i could notice it and then also if there were people in frame the people would just be moving like incredibly fast they'd be like even though it was supposed to be normal speed, like normal speed, you know? So it was very interesting that they used this technique. And it is something that I feel like maybe not a lot of people notice, or maybe people do notice. I don't know if it, maybe it's just because I watch a lot of movies and I did go to, or I have done a few film classes at school. So maybe that is why I notice it, or maybe it is just a very noticeable thing. But it was very interesting. And it is something that I feel like a lot of action movies do use is kind of a lower frame rate or a higher frame rate depending to kind of make the action smoother or faster and stuff like that and I thought they used it a lot but I thought they used it sparingly enough where it didn't distract me too much from the movie and it also just kind of made the scenes in a way better because if they would have done it at a normal FPS then all the action would have felt very slow because the cars again were, were probably driving slower than they wanted them to so adding like decreasing the fps i think again i think that's what they were doing decreasing the fps made the cars look like they were going faster and i thought that was a really smart filming technique to get around maybe a tighter budget or just be the cars wouldn't, weren't able to go that fast another thing before i get into the cast was the directing the directing of this movie was so good George Miller is a phenomenal director and he turned it up a notch with this movie with Mad Max. He had like, I could tell that Mad Max was on a budget just because a lot of the shots were very simple. They were very like professionally and very well framed and very like everything was placed in, in a somewhere in such a simple shot. Everything was placed so well that you could kind of tell the story in the frame, even though it might've just been like a static tripod shot, such as when his, uh, girlfriend and kid die and then the shoe like kind of trumbles out and the bikes go by and all you can hear is the scream like that is such an, a magnificent shot and it's like the easiest shot it was like just a very static low down shot and all you have to do is tuck a shoe in but it was masterfully done and in this movie again higher budget means like cooler shots in George Miller's opinion because some of these shots were amazing the cam shots when they were on the cars and the camera would have been on a car or something following these cars along kind of weaving in and out of them maybe are driving beside them getting this tracking shot were phenomenal my favorite shot of this movie was when the truck does a u-turn mad max's gas truck does like a u-turn and then the cars follow and then there's two cars side by side and the sun sets in the background and as the, the camera swivels between the cars and you get glimpses of the sunset before like it before it being eclipsed by another car and then sunset again like beautiful beautiful stuff created stuff and i was excited for these movies because again mad max fury road has some of the most amazing visuals and amazing action sequences that i've ever seen in a movie and i love watching these old mad max movies to see kind of how mad max fury road again how those visuals came to be and in this movie those visuals from mad max fury road i could see in Mad Max 2 and it was really really cool I just thought his directing all of the aerial shots were phenomenal when all the cars were driving in like this beautiful formation and the dust was piling behind them just like just amazing stuff the cinematography the directing of this movie as well as the action the score and I'm gonna get to the acting everything in this movie was absolutely top-notch and I thought it was so much fun getting into the cast now I don't have my monitor right beside me at the moment so I'm just gonna have to be looking at my phone sorry about that but getting into the cast now we are gonna start with Mel Gibson obviously I think I'm only gonna talk about the the first three people just like uh, Mel Gibson Bruce Spence and Emil em, em, Emil Minty uh, I think everyone else was just too su too supporting although I would like to had something at the end but I think everyone else had too much of a supporting role to really talk about but Mel Gibson this movie I thought was phenomenal although I don't think he had this is not a bad thing I'm just saying this although I think he did not speak as much he barely spoke in this movie if I'm not mistaken I feel like he barely spoke in this movie please let me know if I'm wrong but I feel like he said like 10 sentences total in this whole movie but I thought that his character I thought I liked his character more in the first movie but i think that it was really okay i don't know how to say this i think he did a really good job with his character although i think they maybe could have done a little bit more with his grief 
and stuff with his family. They brought it up once, and I was, re I was, re I really liked it. And obviously, they don't need to overdo it. They, I, but I just thought maybe they could have done it a little bit more. But maybe Mad Max Three will do that. Just as I wanted the world to be built in the first movie, they really built it up in the second movie. So I'm, I'm gonna wait for the third movie before I lodge any formal complaints, if you know what I mean. But I thought his character could have used a little bit more emotion in this movie although now that i'm saying that i think his character is maybe perfectly fine the way he is kind of this emotionless mad max and that's kind of what the movie starts with this prologue which is like he became this empty shell of a person and he be which okay never mind i retract my emotional statement now that i just said that i think that he is perfectly fine the way he is um i i again now that i'm just thinking this through actually that the reason that he's not emotional is because he is an empty husk, an empty shell of a person. But I thought he played this character really well. When he spoke, I thought he was awesome. But I think he did, again, I think he excels at the action sequences in this movie. He was, he just looks like Mad Max. He just looks like he knows what he's doing, but he's also crazy, but he's also grieving, but he's also empty inside, you know? And I feel like Mel Gibson just kind of portrays all of that at the same time, and I thought just I thought he just did an amazing job. Bruce Spence as the gyro captain. Was that his name in the movie? Just the gyro captain? Did he not actually not have a name in the movie? I don't know. Google is just telling me the gyro captain, but I thought that he was I thought that he was really funny, and I'm really glad that he stuck around for the most of the movie. I was kind of worried that he was only going to be in it at the start, and then not at the end. I was worried because I really liked his character, and I thought he was I, he was just so much fun to watch, and I'm glad that he came back. I'm glad that he got good action sequences. I'm glad that he did not die in the movie, because that means he could be... No, actually, you know what? I was going to say he could be in the third movie, but he's not going to be in the third movie. I feel like this plot line has moved on they're going to the other side of australia or something like that and mad max has disappeared so i don't think bruce spencer's character will be back but i thought he was a hoot and a half he was amazing in this movie and i thought he was so much fun again and i love that he kept calling mad max partner it just made my day whenever he said that so i thought bruce spencer did an amazing job finally last but not least is emil minty as the feral kid i thought that he was just so funny that just the growling and the howling and like just the animalistic facial expressions i thought as a child actor he did a great great job uh he didn't again he didn't have a lot to do in this movie his main role was just to kind of act innocent but also curious but also pretend to be like a dog or a wolf or something like that but i thought he played that really really well and i was very, I found the kid very, very likable, and I kind of wish that Mel Gibson's Mad Max had just kind of adopted him as his own kid. I thought maybe that was what was going to happen at the end of the movie, and I was very excited for that because I kind of wanted to see him and that raise that kid. I think that might be good for his character after losing his kid. I think he needs some form of person back in his life, if you know what I mean. But yeah, I thought he did a great job. The other thing I want to talk about very quickly is that Google, Google, the Google says that Hugh K. Keys Burn, Hugh Keys Burn was in this movie. He is not, he does not have a role under his name, but that man is the villain or was the villain in the first Mad Max movie. So if he's in this movie, who was he? I thought maybe he was going to be the guy with the hockey mask, the Jason mask on, just because I know in the third, in the, in Fury Road that he, I'm pretty sure he plays the, the main antagonist in that movie. So I was like, maybe this is his evolution into becoming that thing. Maybe this movie, these movies kind of watch show him evolve, but I didn't know for sure if that was him or not. And now that Google says it on the, says he's in this movie, I'm like, oh, is he? But then he doesn't have like a name under his name. Like he has no character name under his name. So I was like, oh, maybe that's not him. But if he's in this movie, sometimes Google makes mistakes and just kind of puts random actors in or actors from the first movie into the second movie. But I think it's kind of cool if he's in this movie because now I want to watch it and find his character if he was not that main guy that I thought he was. Okay, yeah, that is it for my Bad Max 2 reaction. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing people right here for supporting me, supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. And thank you so much. Well, I was going to say thank you so much. Huxley also says a big, big thank you. Look, she's giving, she wants pets. These are thank you pets. <laughs> okay, then thank you so much for listening to my review as well if you made it this far. It means a lot for you just to listen to me talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And I will see you next time for my next movie reaction.